Hi all, welcome to the session where we are going to use um, decision tree for a classification problem. So uh, to start with, uh, let me import the necessary libraries and uh, let me download the required data set. So let me explain the problem statement, what we are trying to solve today. So uh, the data set consists of uh, two data sets, essentially one is the application data set and the second one is the credit history data set. So the problem statement is based on the historical data we have with respect to applicants, we need to come up with a model to classify whether to approve a credit card application for a particular customer or not. So as I had stated, we do have the past application data and for those customers the corresponding credit history data. So let me quickly show uh, how the data looks like for the applications data set. We do have a uh, few bina uh, binary variables like the uh, gender, uh, whether he owns a car or not, and continuous variable like the total amount uh, income he draws, and a uh, few categorical variables like the income type, education type, etc. So we do have a nice mix of data to deal with. And also uh, let's look at the uh, credit history of each of these applicants, where we have close to a million records. And uh, for each of the uh, customer ID we have, or the application ID we have, we see that there are multiple entries uh, histori historically. For example, uh, the month balance zero corresponds to this particular month, The what's the status of that particular client. And uh, minus one is the previous month status, minus two is the uh, uh, two months back status. So. Uh, so uh, the first step uh, what we would like to do is uh, for these uh, credit history data where we have multiple entries for the same customer, uh, the f uh, first thing is to uh, create a uniform entry. So what we are trying to do is uh, we picked up the uh, month's balance and we picked up the maximum historical data is available for that particular customer and we had group by ID for that and identified the maximum available month. So essentially what's happening is the different status uh, what we have showcased here for each of the ID. Now we have the counts as a after grouping by uh, what we have is X and C are close to 40,000 records where 0 to 4 the remaining counts are pertaining here. So now uh, we have close to 45,000 or close to 46,000 records in our credit history. Thing. So now uh, next step is we are going to prepare the uh, uh, target variable. So essentially, uh, I would like to explain in a while what these uh, C and X actually mean for. Um, so this is the status of the different uh, values we have in our uh, credit history data. So the status is zero when uh, when the last month's amount is due. Uh, the status is two when two months of amount is uh, due. And uh, status is three when past three months of amount is due. And whereas uh, C and X is currently essentially mean that there is nothing to be paid for this month. So uh, what we are doing is we are replacing C and X as zeros. And uh, and we are okay to be uh, where, uh, where we are taking a qualitative call where we are assigning a value of uh, zero who are past one month uh, due. So essentially we have prepared the target variable where C, X and zero are taking the values of zeros and anything uh, value which is greater than one, we are classifying them as one. So this is our target variable where we are saying uh, in our data set, we have close to 45,000 uh, applicants who are credit worthy is essentially what we are meaning. And there are about 937 applicants who are the uh, uh, for the minority class in, in class in this data set and whom we are trying to predict in the sense to deem them they are not credit worthy. So uh, with this uh, preparation of the credit uh, history data set and the application data set we have earlier, we are doing a merge on the ID column, doing an inner merge in a join and this is the final data set we have. So we are looking at uh, the different column types of our final data frame DF and also the number of null values in for each of these columns. As seen, only one column, the occupation type alone is having uh, some missing values or null values, whereas for the other uh, columns, we don't have any. So as we had stated, we had converted our problem to a binary classification where for our applicant data sets, this is the split of the data we have, where we have uh, close to 36,000 records as zero and uh, only around 2% of the data, which is 768 uh, records, which take the value of one. So let us quickly look at the uh, data how it looks like after the merge. So as you can see, we have the ID and the code gender, which is our applicant data. And towards the end, we have our uh, month's balance and status. 
so and based on the different column types we have uh, I had just split them into the binary features where the gender uh, whether he's owning a car or a reality or a flag work from flag email are taken and there are continuous features like the number of children they have uh, the family member count and the amount etc and categorical features are the income type uh, education type etc so uh, so from as we had already prepared the target variable uh, I'm dropping the uh, features which are not necessary for example the months balance is something which is picked up from the credit history data set which is no longer needed because it has already been taken care of while deriving the target variable which is my status and occupation type as seen earlier <coughs> we have close to 11,000 records missing so I'm I'm dropping that particular column and flag mobile column is also been dropped the reason being all the data points in my data set of DF they have the value of one essentially they don't add any information for the model to split then we are doing a few transformations on the data where uh, I had used uh, uh, ordinal encoder and a label encoder uh, for example for the categorical variables like the income type which takes the values like working commercial associate pensioner we can take a qualitative call that uh, uh, with the expectation that a student will be earning less let's say when compared to a state servant in the sense where we have an order for that particular categorical variable so in that case we do use an ordinal, en ordinal encoder and um, given encoding and we are converting the categorical variable into a numerical one similarly for categorical variables where we can't specify any order we are going to use a label encoder and fit them so as seen here and finally uh, for the uh, uh, columns where which are taking binary values like the gender where it's male and female uh, we had used uh, inbuilt pandas function get dummies essentially what it does is it will replace uh, with ones for one particular value and zeros for the other one so let me quickly show what this code gender happened so as seen here wherever m was present it converted to one and the remaining places it, it uh, replaced with zeros so in this way essentially all our non-numerical columns are converted into numerical columns using various transformation techniques so now let's quickly look at the distribution of each of these continuous variables which we had used to identify the outliers in our data set but the reason being outliers does skew the model in while predicting so let me quickly plot a uh, few variables like the uh, count children amount income total the days since birth the days employed count family members so this is the uh, scattered plot which we had put and as seen here uh, for example uh, the days birth and uh, days employed um, they look pretty good in the sense I cannot see any outliers visually however for uh, count children amount income total and count family members I do see a few of the data points which are away from the uh, 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 concentrated areas so these are my outliers which I which need to be taken care of so let's quickly look what are the uh, how many number of data points we have in our uh, data set uh, so we have close to 36,000 uh, data points so let me uh, apply different uh, outlier removal techniques to handle these outliers so for the uh, amount income total I'm going to use the IQR technique interquartile range where I'm calculating the 75th and 25th percentiles and I'm creating the range within which the data points have to fall 1.5 times either side of the IQR and similarly uh, for count children and count family members uh, visually I can see that okay uh, these data points are my outliers similarly for count family members these are my outliers so I have fixed a range of uh, 8 as the cutoff point visually and I removed the points which are beyond 8 for these two variables so as seen here so in this way I had removed the outliers uh, one using a statistical technique like an IQR and a couple of qualitative calls by looking visually at the scattered plots so now after removing of these outliers as you can see uh, close to uh, 2000 data points have been removed and now we have the final data frame with 34,922 data points so when I do the plotting again this is how the each of the variables look uh, devoid of any of the outliers which we had seen earlier so till now what we have done is purely uh, data cleaning and data massaging now comes the actual modeling phase where we are going to uh, train the data after splitting it and then uh, predict it on the test data set so the first step what I am doing is uh, 
uh, the status column is moved towards the last which is my target variable and then I'm splitting them into X and Y data frames where uh, essentially these will be used for the split of train and test data frames where X are my independent variables and Y is my dependent variable where we had split here and using the train test split function we are splitting with 20% test data size and we are going to use a transformer the minmax scalar where we are uh, fitting our x train data set and saving it as x scaled and coming back to something called this smart here so essentially what smart or why it is uh, used in this particular data set is coming back to a distribution of uh, the binary classes as you can see we have close to 36,000 data points which are zero and only 2% of the data is uh, class one. So there's a huge imbalance in the data so which might skew or bias our model towards the majority class. So to handle this imbalance we do use some over uh, some sampling techniques so in this case which I had used SMOT. So SMOT stands uh, for uh, synthetic minority oversampling technique. So essentially what SMOT does is uh, so SMOT is uh, based on k-nearest neighbor uh, assume a, a, a scatter plot uh, where we have uh, two data points which correspond to the class one. So what SMOT does is synthetically it will create uh, 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 synthetic data points by connecting these uh, two uh, class one data points and uh, merge uh, joining them and in between it creates the synthetic data points. So uh, that's how SMOT works where we kind of balance the data by creating synthetic data points for the minority class. So using SMOT we are fitting the uh, X and Y uh, data sets and how it actually functions we can see it here. So essentially for the Y train where we, this was the class distribution we had where we had in our training data set we had around 27,000 records corresponding to the class 0 and around 581 records corresponding to class 1. So after using SMOT and uh, doing the resampling what we have is an equally distributed classes for both. So and today uh, we are going to use a decision tree classifier model to classify these particular data points. So I'm import, I'm storing the decision tree classifier in classifier and I'm fitting into the model where I'm fitting my uh, smart, uh, you, I mean, uh, the data sets which are created using smart, the X train resample and Y train resample. And as seen here, uh, the X test which was split earlier, we are using the same scalar on which we had fit, uh, we, on which we had fit our train data set the MMS where we saved our min-max scalar and I'm transforming the X-test data set and finally predicting the model which was fit on our training data set. So let's quickly look at how the model had performed. Uh, as seen here, the model accuracy is close to 96%. Uh, it is, uh, it looks good from a, as a plain vanilla case here, but however, Let's look at more intriguing uh, uh, metrics uh, on why this may not be the actual representation of the model performance. So let me print the classification report which gives me additional features like the uh, precision recall. So as seen here, uh, accuracy score is close to 96%. Uh, but however, if I'm looking at the precision and recall of this particular model, the, it is good with respect to classifying the zero which are our credit worthy customers. However, the credit risky ones which go to the class one, the precision and recall has been uh, 19 and 22%. So exactly what exactly does this precision and recall mean? So precision is as the name states, what it means is among the data points which the model has classified as class one, how many of them are actually class ones? Similarly recall, as the name suggests, among the data points which my model has classified as one, historically, among the available all data points corresponding to class one, how many of how many of them is my model able to predict? So as seen, we just got around 19% and 22% uh, uh, corresponding to precision and recall, which state that the model is not really a great one at predicting the not so credit worthy customers. So, uh, so the uh, multiple reasons can be attributed to it. Maybe essentially we don't have enough information uh, or enough data to build a model. So this can this model performance can further be improved uh, by performing some hyperparameter tuning for the decision tree model, or uh, 
or creating more new features based on the uh, raw data we have and uh, the beauty of, of uh, this particular model is we can also look at the feature importance on which the uh, split of the decision tree had occurred so we are going to use the inbuilt function the feature underscore uh, importance underscore and we are going to use the metric genie importance on which the decision tree split occurs and as seen here uh, this is the order uh, uh, of the uh, feature features based on their importance so the highest importance goes for the uh, income type and uh, the uh, amount of income that particular client is making and his age that's what is the days birth in and the days employed for how long has he been employed so it makes uh, logical sense as well like these are the parameters on which uh, a credit card approval decision has to be made and also uh, to uh, finalize further uh, we can visualize the uh, decision tree for what we have built in this particular model using the pyrot plus we can store it to a graph and download the diagram where the decision tree can be viewed as this particular way where where we have a visual representation for the decision tree for each of the split it has made across data points so in this way uh, decision tree can be used as uh, one of the for the uh, classification of data especially for binary classification problems and uh, using a couple of techniques like uh, smart and using data transformers we can improve the performance of a model in case when the data is an imbalanced data set we have thank you